So let's go over some manometers. And we have the first one to the left is a manometer. And a manometer is a device where you measure uh, gas pressure based on some standard. It's almost like a titration where we use a standard. However, it's usually based upon the level of liquids being supported. It all goes back to the original unit of pressure, which is a millimeter of mercury. Remember, Torricelli had a tube uh, essentially filled with mercury, and he filled it up, and he inverted it onto a bin of mercury, and he saw that the mercury, of course, is not red, but just changing the colors. When he filled it all the way up, so he had a tube filled all the way, all the way up with mercury, and that tube completely filled, and this is a neat demo that I've seen years ago. He, you know, you put your thumb over this big test tube, you invert it, and what happens is because the weight of, or the, the yeah, the weight of the mercury is greater than the uh, pressure by the atmospheric pressure, some of this mercury comes out. Now, of course, you have to uh, put your thumb over it or cover it and invert it under the liquid's level. So this is a basically a bin of mercury, okay? And what happens is the level drops. Well, why? Well, because uh, atmospheric pressure made up of gas molecules that are moving hundreds of miles an hour are slamming into the liquid, forcing or supporting the liquid up. So this force that's constantly hitting, which we now know is about 14.7 pounds per square inch, is hitting this liquid at all points of the surface keeping the liquid up. But you've noticed some came out. Well, why? Well, the force of pressure is not unlimited. And he measured that atmospheric pressure can support, and if you were to measure this from here to here, let's get rid of some area here. If you measure that, it can be supported by approximately 760 millimeters of mercury can be supported. Because his name is Torricelli, it became Taurus. So the initial unit of pressure is all about uh, how much liquid can be supported okay, in a column. And that's what this is about here, and there's some tie-ins here. So let's get right to it. Okay? The background's important, and I talk more about that in other lectures, but let's get right to manometers. Okay, well, I've got a pressure of some gas. I've got a gas confined in an area, and this gas is moving, and it's colliding and moving translationally. It's hitting the top of this liquid, pushing it down. There's also gas in the atmosphere, and this is the atmospheric pressure pushing down this open tube. All of these I'll talk about today are open tubes. So the pressure pushing down on this side of the liquid must be equal to the pressure pushing down because as I've shown you, the difference between the liquids is zero. So nobody's winning. And I mean by winning is the pressure on one side pushing on a liquid cannot be greater than the other because the liquids are at equal levels. So therefore, we say the pressure is not zero. We say the pressure, okay, pushing down, which is really pushing against this other arrow, has to be equal because there's no difference in the level. All right, so we say in this case, the pressure of the gas is 760 millimeters of mercury. Or we could say 760 torr. Those are uh, equivalents. You could also say one atmosphere of pressure. Uh, an ATM is, in fact, the pressure of a gas at sea level. And if you want to use kilopascals, 101.3 kPa, or kilopascals, of course, we derive this using SI units. Let's go down to some others. Number two, well, number two is not, the levels are not equal. We have a pressure of a gas confined to a this part of the manometer, and of course, it's applying a pressure downward. It's going through this and, and forcing on a liquid. And of course, atmospheric pressure is forcing pressure down this tube as well. Okay, um, so who's winning? Well, clearly, atmospheric pressure is winning because it's pushing the tube, and it's winning by 60 millimeters of mercury. Now, what we're saying is not only is the atmospheric pressure pushing this liquid up. Now I'm going to draw an arrow here. It's also supporting 60 millimeters of mercury from this equal, equilibrium position. So it's supporting that much mercury, which is very heavy, 
and it's pushing up against the pressure. So if I was to draw a, um, a force diagram, what I have is I have the force of the atmosphere. Now the arrow is up by the atmosphere with 760. Okay, and this is the atmosphere. That's this right here. And you say, well, how did that happen? Well, this pressure is pushing on the liquid to go up. Okay, so we have an upward force, okay, due to the atmospheric pressure. Now we have some opposing forces. And the opposing forces is the weight of the liquid. The liquid itself, okay, has a force, has a weight. And the weight of 60 millimeters of mercury, okay, is significant. Now remember, pressure is a force over an area. So we're not just dealing with weight as a force. It's the weight over the area that it exists in. So if the column is bigger or wider, the pressure would still be the same because the area gets bigger for this for for more volume of liquid. So it's not really just weight. It's weight over an area. But we'll just use that that analogy. So we know the force over an area for six for 60 millimeters of mercury to be an actual unit based on Torricelli's barometer. So 60 millimeters of mercury okay is that force over an area that's pushing down now we have something else remember not only is and I'll just get rid of some of this okay not only am I overcoming um, not only am I supporting this amount of mercury in a column which we know to be a pressure I'm pushing back the liquid that was in that spot, right? When it first started, you had liquid, you had gas here. So we had to push that back. So the other opposing force, all right, is going to be the pressure of the gas, all right, of the gas in the manometer. Now, if you notice, these are on the same team. This gas pressure is pushing back on the liquid. And of course, the weight over the area is pushing back. So these have to be equal to this arrow. What do I know? Because this line is not moving. It's staying static. This line is staying there. So these pressures have to equal. So when you think about it, all right, that the arrow up has to equal the arrow down. Well, if this is 760 pushing up, it's supporting 60 mils of mercury. And what's left is, well, what's 760 minus 60? Well, of course, the answer there is 700 millimeters of mercury okay or if you don't like that analogy or the way that I did the force diagram think of it this way the pressure in this manometer is losing the battle of the liquids by this force over an area 60 millimeters of mercury so this pressure is pushing back and it's winning by 60 so because this is losing by 60 millimeters of mercury, it must be 60 millimeters of mercury less than atmospheric pressure. So it's 760 minus the 60, and the pressure of the gas is 60 millimeters less than the pressure because of the difference of the height of the liquid, if you don't see that. And of course, the answer is 700. And of course, I could write tor because millimeters of mercury are, and tor are synonymous. Okay? Different ways to look at it. So number three... Number three is a little different because I'm giving you the pressure pushing down, and now I'm giving you the gas, and I'm saying, hey, what's the height of the column? Well, looking at the columns, I can see that the winner of the liquids is the pressure of the gas in the manometer. It's pushing down, and it's supporting this column of a gas. So the atmosphere is losing, okay, to this pressure. How much is it losing by? Well, it's losing by the difference, right? Right? If this gas is 200 or so uh, you know, uh, millimeters of mercury greater, well, think about it. This uh, gas has to what? It's pushing up. It's 783 millimeters of mercury. And the atmospheric pressure, you're saying, is 528 millimeters of mercury. Okay, what's the other force going on here? The other force is the weight over the area of the liquid. The liquid is some millimeters of mercury. Now, because these levels aren't changing, the force upward, remember the force upward, you're forcing the liquid up this tube by the pressure on the, on the surface here by the gas molecules, okay, is 783 millimeters of mercury. 
and the opposing forces are 528 plus whatever the height is. Well, they have to equal each other. So what's the difference? The difference is this height. Okay, so 783 minus 528, which is 255 millimeters of mercury. Now, does that make any sense? Well, sure it does. Because if this gas is beating back this gas here by the liquid pushing up, think about it, this level's higher because this gas has a greater force per area than the gas pushing on this liquid. So it's winning by this much. So it's winning by that much. Well, that much, 255, should be how much greater it is in pressure than the gas that it's fighting with. Okay, so the answer is 255 millimeters of mercury, or TOR, like we've been talking about, number four. Okay, now I have a silly gas, and same idea, I look at this manometer and say, who's winning? Well, the silly gas has a higher pressure. It's pushing back this liquid by 90 millimeters. I know the pressure pushing down is 800, so clearly this has a higher pressure by 90 so the answer, of course, is going to be 800 plus 90, okay, and that'll be 890 millimeters of mercury or TOR. Now, if you don't see that, you've got to see that the reason why this line is up is because this gas is pushing on it more than the atmospheric is pushing down. How much more is it pushing? The difference is in the column of liquid. I'm going to go back to this force diagram. I've got 800 millimeters of force per area pushing down. I've got the weight over the area of the liquid, which we know to be a force of 90 millimeters of mercury. Torricelli established that supporting a column of mercury is an actual pressure unit. What's opposing that pressure? What's keeping this up? Okay, by the molecules colliding at the surface. The opposing pressure is whatever that silly gas's pressure is. Well, not only is it pushing back 800, it's supporting 90. So the total pressure, of course, has to be 890 because the opposite arrows, okay, have to equal each other. This line isn't changing, okay? So another way to think about it, and you can certainly write TOR. Number five, all right, looking at this, I see that the silly gas B all right, is losing to the atmospheric pressure by that column of mercury. However, if I notice something, I have something that's not in the same units. Kilopascal, although a pressure unit that we've derived from SI units using our formulas and understanding of some physical quantities, is not a millimeter of mercury. So what we do is we convert. Let's get into the same units here. Well, 101.3 kilopascals I'm going to get rid of these units as we've been doing, and KPA goes in the bottom. And I know that for every 101.3 kilopascals, there's 760 millimeters of mercury. We know this because at sea level, that's the height of a column of mercury supported. That's the pressure unit, and that's the pressure of one at sea level. So pretty simple math here. KPAs cancel, and if you were to do the math, you'd see that 101.3 cancel, and you're left with 760. And of course that works because a 760 is equal to one atmosphere and one atmosphere is equal to 101.3 kilopascals. So in any case, get rid of this and you've got 760 millimeters of mercury. And then we're back on track with the same units we can work with. Uh, the silly gas is losing, losing by how much? 225. So the atmosphere is greater than the silly gas by 225. So the silly gas has to be 760 minus 225, which is equal to 535 millimeters of mercury. Again, force diagrams. I've got a bigger force pushing down, which is, whoops, uh, 760. All right, sometimes my big fingers get in the way. Oops. So I've got. Um, Start that again. So I've got a bigger force pushing down, which is 760 uh, tor. And then I have, well, what's opposing that? I've got the weight of the liquid, and it's opposing it. Now, 
So the opposition is the liquid, which is 225 millimeters. All right, we'll just, we'll just use that as tor. So 225 tor. And what else is opposing this liquid? Silly gas is molecules colliding with the surface, okay, which is our unknown. These forces have to equal because these lines are not moving. You can make that assumption. So the, the difference of those, what number plus 225 is 760, and that is the pressure of your gas. So manometers are a, a device, and the theory behind them is used in many, many measurement devices, but we're using some standard or some known quantity, in this case, atmospheric pressure, and then, of course, the column of liquid being supported. All right, and this is not something that you don't see in your life. Uh, one common example is a sphygmomanometer. If you ever gotten your blood pressure checked, Okay, what they do is they put a cuff on you, and they basically stop your brachial artery. They close it. They put enough pressure to close your brachial artery. And then, of course, they release the pressure, and they listen with a stethoscope. And basically, looking at the pressure gauge, as the pressure decreases, at some point, they're going he to hear the blood start flowing through your artery. And when they hear that, when they hear that happen, they, they look at the pressure at their gauge. And knowing that the gauge must equal the pressure in the artery once they hear is a manometer type of concept. You're using the pressure in the blood that has to equal the pressure in the gauge for the cuff because water, I mean, in this case, blood will go through the artery only when the pressure of the cuff can be opened up by the, 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 the pressure of the body. And you're comparing a known with a gauge. And essentially, that's a, a manometer. When you, that's why they call it a sphygmo manometer. Any case, uh, hope that opened up your eyes a little bit on how to use manometers.